What's going on with y'all? What's the deal? I'm back once again. Back like I never left. Um, Important news. Great news, man. So my brother, one of my best friends since I was in the fourth grade, he has a movie coming out. That you all can view. You can view it on iTunes. You can pre-order it on iTunes. Or you can uh, order it on DVD. It's going to come to DVD probably about a week after it drops on iTunes. And I can let you know that information. I'm going to put the link to the movie. Or the link to the trailer of the film. In the, in the description box. So y'all check that out. The movie is called Shot Town. The movie follows my boy, my brother Kiefer Sykes. On his journey to becoming a, a professional basketball player. It starts at the age when we were 17. He's 17 years old. He was 17 years old at the time that they started filming him. Um, originally, it was a group of guys looking for... These guys were filming during production on Oprah. Oprah's show during his last season. So they knew Chicago was a hotbed for basketball talent. They go to the parks, try to find some up-and-coming basketball players to record. They found my boy, my brother Kiefer, uh, hooping. And they just took a liking to him, took a liking to his family, took a liking to his personality, and um, the, just the kid, he, the person that he was overall. Um, here's what I would like to share with you all about Kiefer, man. Kiefer is the one of the most hardest working young men that I ever met in my life. Worked for everything he's got. Every single thing he, he's got, he's, he deserves. I remember he had this vision and his dream to become a professional basketball player. Since we were in the fourth grade. And he took it very seriously. How seriously did he take it? Every single time I went to his house, we went to the basketball court. Every single time we went to the court, we didn't play. We didn't stop playing until we played about five, six games. Then before he left the court, he would hit ten free throws consecutively. To try to make sure his skills were up to par for the next level of competition. And I mean, we were at the court. Kiefer was challenging kids. We were in seventh grade. He was challenging kids. In, the, in their sophomore years of high school, junior, year, jun, junior years of high school, and he was beating them handily. And he was, at, at most, in seventh grade, 5'6", five, 5'5". Five five. So individuals, people didn't even think he would grow to be 6 feet, which he is now. He's 6 feet even. But um, this tells you the type of work ethic and the type of passion that he had for the game of basketball and the tenacity that he had and confidence that he had in himself to challenge individuals who were older than him. I remember we went to the court. Jesse Owens Park. I was on living on 86 in Euclid on over what's it's considered over east. It's southeast Chicago, right over there past Jeffrey. No, right before Jeffrey, past Stony Island. So we were hooping at Jeffrey Owens Park. Um, we in we just finished. We just had graduated from the eighth grade. Kiefer at the park playing against a sophomore in high school. We playing two on two against a dude. Some dudes is like sophomores in high school, and I'm telling you, Kiefer was giving them the business. You know, and I was straight. I wasn't the best basketball player. I was straight. But he was giving him the business. And he took it very, very seriously. And um, when we got to high school, I saw his passion and his drive for the game kick to another level. Especially after the birth of his son. He had a son when he was 15 years old. Um, at the time, we were just completing our, what was it, just completing our sophomore year? Going into junior year of high school. He just had his, um, his baby boy. And um, during that time, I saw a whole different animal in him. Because I guess, well, not I guess, I know at that point, basketball became more serious Serious because it was more than about him. It was, more, it was about his son. So he earned a scholarship to go to University of Wisconsin-Green Bay out of Marshall High School on the west side of Chicago. He stayed on the southeast side of Chicago but went to Marshall because of the rich basketball history at Marshall and because of the fact that his older brother... Um, went to Marshall as well. So, made a name for himself at Marshall, earned a scholarship to go to Green Bay, and became a legend in the city of Green Bay. A basketball legend. You can ask anybody in Green Bay about Kiefer Sykes. They can tell you who he is and what he's done. Uh, even was awarded the key to his city for his uh, community efforts with the children, always been doing some type of camps with the kids, always volunteering for camps, helping the kids out. Always even staying to sign autographs for staying way past his time to sign autographs, take pictures with uh, with children and with fans of the team. And it was so surreal to me to see Kiefer from us playing basketball in the parks to see him on national TV playing against Marquette, playing against Miami, playing against Wisconsin, giving them the business. Like, I mean, scoring 20 some plus points. He scored over 2000 points in his career 
at the at the University of Wisconsin Green Bay, and um, I just saw him grow up as a man. You know, and I, it's something that I really respected. During the time period when he was in college, he lost his father during after the completion of our freshman year of college, and that was devastating for him. His father was everything. He was closest. He was closest to his father, like super close to his father. So when it happened. It was a hurtful situation for him, but that, all that did was drive him to be more, drive him to be successful, and to be the father that his father was for him to his child, to his children. And so, um, well, now he has a, a daughter as well. Now, so during that time, man, it was surreal watching him become this this iconic figure in in Green Bay and in Chicago. I always say he became a legend in two cities at the same time because. He wasn't highly touted coming out of high school, which is why he went to a mid-major program. Um, he wasn't highly regarded like the other guards in this class. He came out the same year Ryan Boltwright came out. Ryan Boltwright is a point guard that played for the University of Wisconsin. I mean, Wisconsin. He played for University of Connecticut, and they won a national championship with him and Shabazz Napier at the helm. But um, Ryan was even ranked low in the rankings. So you know Kiefer wasn't anywhere near those top rankings. But he didn't let that stop him. When he came to when he came to college, he was a man on a mission. He started immediately and delivered immediately. And every year I saw him get better, get better and better and better in all aspects of his game. And um, one thing I always re respected about him was that he never he never was scared to work on things that he wasn't good at. You know, a lot of basketball players they tend to just only work on things they're already good at, try to just make those things better. He worked on three-point shooting, which he wasn't a prolific three-point shooter. Worked on that, and it got better percentage-wise every single year. Shot started looking better every single year. Um, became more of a, a, a vocal leader. Became more of a uh, an assist man, an all-around basketball player that can score, that can assist, that can shoot. I can drop some um, some highlights in the comment section as well. Um, so yeah, when he, by the time he was a senior in college, he had gained a lot of national attention. Uh, was even in the college dunk contest, six foot guard that can jump out the gym. Keeper probably has like a 45 inch vertical. Like for a six foot guard, that's amazing. Um, so at the time when he was a senior in high school, I mean, a senior in college, he made a name for himself getting interviews. Um, even at this mid major program, helped to pro propel them into a national spotlight, sort of. You know, they were playing big time games, even beat Virginia at the time, where when Virginia finished the season ranked probably, I think like what, top five? Or something like that. They were ranked nice at the end of the season. Kiefer beat them. And this time he beat Miami. Uh, Kiefer, Kiefer and Green Bay, they beat University of Miami. They beat Marquette. Uh, came in close to beating Wisconsin. Lost by three to Wisconsin. But that game is one of the best. Like, one of the best games I've seen Kiefer play all around. Like, I mean, from attacking from start to finish. He started off the game with a dunk off of the tip. Off of the opening tip off. Got a dunk immediately. Drove to the cup past Trayvon Jackson. That's Jim Jackson's son. Y'all know y'all that watch basketball know Jim Jackson. Um, started off the game with a dunk, and it was on from there. To see him, like I said, get national attention and get draft consideration, it was incredible. I remember draft night 2015. We were all at his house with his family, his mother, um, all of his family, his mother, his siblings. His child, everything. It, it, it was it was a crazy moment, and I'm sitting. We sitting around the TV, like some you see on when Sebastian Telfair through the fire. Me and Kiefer grew up watching through the fire, so to see that moment play out like that, like to see us like okay through the fire, they were waiting for Sebastian's name to get called. We watching the 2015 draft. We waiting for Kiefer's name to get called. We just sitting there waiting patiently, like okay, let's see what's gonna happen. Ultimately, his name didn't get called. But he did get a call from his agent that he would play summer league with the Cleveland Cavaliers. Perform well in that. Um, but then he went to go play in the development league at, with the San Antonio Spurs, with the Austin Spurs program. Did a great job with them. Played summer league with Golden State. Ultimately, still didn't make the um, the final roster, which I think when y'all see my man's when y'all see my man's play, y'all going to see he should be in the league, period. It's just the fact he's six feet. So it's kind of harder for six foot guards to get a, a a leg up over these guys at six four. If Keeper was six four, he would have got drafted. Period. I think he would have got drafted first round. If he was six four, he would have got drafted first round. And it's hands down. 
because I don't see too many guards messing with him. And it's not just because it's my friend. It's because I know basketball and I know talent when I see it. If I didn't know him, I would say the same thing. I'm picking him. At the time he was a, at the time when he was in college, I was picking him over any point guard in the country. I would take him over any one of them because I knew what he was made of. I knew he was made of that Chicago toughness, that Chicago grit, that players need to excel. And he had a lot on his chips on his shoulder due to the fact that he was underrated, due to the fact that he was undersized in some people's opinion, and due to the fact that, um, you know, he had a lot of weight on his shoulders being a looked at as the provider for his family at such a young age. So, um, yeah, he ultimately ended up, now he's overseas playing um, with a team in Italy, I'm sorry, in Italy, uh, on the same team with Norris Cole. Norris Cole, who won two championships playing alongside LeBron James in the Miami Heat. He's playing well, just had a 40-something point game over there the other day. So when y'all check out this movie, y'all are going to definitely be impressed with the young man that he is. Um, and how he's a, always been able to hurdle obstacles, hurdle trials and tribulations, and keep going in spite of, in spite of all the obstacles that he's faced. When I, when I, first of all, I remember when they first started recording this movie, and I never imagined it being as big as it is. Like, I mean, I saw news it was going to drop. I knew it was going to be a documentary, but I'm watching the trailer like, this is phenomenal. This is phenomenal. So, I think y'all are really going to be impressed with the film. I want y'all to check it out. I'm going to put the links. I'm going to put the link to the trailer in the um, description box. And I'm going to put some highlight links as well. I'm trying to think, I'm gonna, am I going to put the highlights or I'm just going to let y'all look them up? But I sh I'm probably going to put some highlights to, to the, uh, the young man's career, to my boy's career, in the description box as well. But y'all check out the film. Once again, man, um... Talk about my boy Kiefer, a great father, a great friend. And I'll, look, let me, I want to talk about, too, having great friends. Like I said, Kiefer is a person that's always been a selfless person. Every time I've come around, he's always just giving me stuff. From shoes to clothing to gear to he go out to eat. He always want to pay for me and all that. You know what I'm saying? And I, I don't like it because, you know, I'm like, man, I want to pay for my own stuff, too. But... It just shows you what type of friend that he is. At a time when I was trying to become a member of Cap Alpha Side, a man loaned me, <laughs> loaned me some money to do it. And I gave it back. But again, the fact that he didn't ask for it back, he didn't care if he got it back or not. He just gave it to me because he knew it was something that I really wanted to do and he had it. So I, I appreciate that man. And um, I want y'all to watch out his film, watch for his film and watch his progression as a basketball player and as a person. So y'all check out that film. It's going to be dope. Peace.